today I'm going to show you how to do a, um, it's a submission off of the guillotine. So there's a tricky little submission that I like using if the guillotine fails. And a lot of people don't see it coming. And even if it fails the second submission, even if that one fails, a lot of times what it'll do is it'll get the person to back up and give you some space uh, to, re to regain your position and uh, things like that. Uh, today is one of my buddies, Fleener. He's going to show you, or he's going to be my uke as I show you guys this technique. Yeah, so here's one of the scenarios that'll happen a lot of times like when I'm playing guillotines. So if I shoot in for my guillotine choke, if I am unable to get this leg on the other side here, it's very possible that when I shoot in, Fleener's gonna roll, okay? Now, if he rolls, this is gonna stop the guillotine. Now I have to fight and do something else, right? So here's the choke. I'm gonna show you the application for it in a couple different positions, but here's the tr choke. The hand grips can be a little tricky at first. So I'm gonna stay clo uh, close to him. As the, the guillotine fails and he rolls off, I'm gonna have my hand grabbing his jaw. This is a chin strap grip, right? We've talked about this multiple times on the channel. I, I learned it in wrestling. It's a great grip to use for head control. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fist, okay? With this hand, and it's gonna come in. So as I'm coming in, I'm gonna open this hand up, and my knuckles are gonna slide right over top of my palm, and I wanna place my knuckles and my, the, my fist right into his carotid. This hand is gonna come up, and I'm going to grab right at the crook of my, or the bend of my wrist here. So if you notice, I'm making a little bend, and that gives my fingers a nice little grip, a little groove to hang into, opposed to if I put it here, I can't really grip into it. If I curl my hand like this, and then get in there, now I've got this nice, strong little grip there. At this point, I now have the ability to apply pressure with the carotid on this arm and this fist right here, and I can finish. Now, you can try to finish the choke here, which sometimes works, but I find that when I'm in this angle, it works better if I come up to my knees, and then from here, I squeeze and finish. And when I'm doing this, you're squeezing in, closing the distance, and pushing in there. And again, anytime you're doing a submission, a choke, I mean, that's the goal, right? You have this little closed circuit of limbs that you're then trying to remove the space out of. So if you have trouble with it, to troubleshoot it, think, all right, Am I putting pressure on the carotids? Yes. Am I removing space? Yes. If you are, then you'll be choking them. If you're not doing one of those things, then that'll be the problem. So let's look at it again, and I'll, then I'll give you one more sort of scenario that this happens with a lot um, as I've been using it in the gym. So we go for the guillotine here. We sit back. He rolls. Boom. We're here. We catch it. Finish. Okay? Another one that will happen in the same sort of situation is as he's like, come back here, right here. As he's sitting back, He'll continue to roll through right here. This happens sometimes. I can still finish the choke, okay? And um, one of my students, we were rolling the other day and he's tough as nails and we, we were having a battle and I actually got this and he, uh, he didn't feel it coming and he went to sleep. Then I had to wake him up afterwards. He knows who he is, but, uh, <laughs> cause he's rowdy. And he was like, he was kind of eating it and he thought he tapped, but it was too late. But right here, I can still put that grip in and then from there, I can still squeeze and finish. And again, at that point, one of the things that's neat about that particular use of it is if you're using it that way, they don't really have a, an easy ability to get the grips and fight them. So if you think about kind of where we're at, let's, let's do from this first position, he rolls. If we're here, he still has the ability to come up with his hands and fight, okay? Once we come up, I can put my head in, like right over top of my grip and it becomes very difficult for him to get his grip there now, okay? So that's kind of a way to protect the hand grip in, in the lock itself is to come up to the position. It's another reason why to do it. But if he rolls this way, now if I'm under here, it's kind of the same thing. I'm gonna bring my head right next to the lock. So now if he tries to get in and grab it, he's not gonna have the ability to do it and I can squeeze. Now, with that said, if the second option fails, what you're probably gonna find is their hands are gonna have to come up to defend and then they become, it becomes easier to set up something else or to move to a position. So just to run through those real quick, we go through, bang, right here. We get in the position, he has to defend right here. That's gonna, if he starts to break the lock, well then I can come up, boom, now I've got my sweep. If he rolls all the way through, now he's in a strong position, I start to go here, his hands come up to defend, I can use them to pop out and come back around, right? So just a few options to play around with after a guillotine fails. So give that one a try. It's just a little uh, thrust choke with the fist. Um, however you want to consider it. It's similar to almost like doing like an Ezekiel in the Nogi. Um, but again, just make sure that when you do it, you're laying in, the knuckles are gonna go right across the palm. We have pressure on the carotids. 
and that'll do the trick. So hopefully that's useful to you guys, and I'll talk to you guys next time.